Hey, this is Nick Sievert, the founder of JangaFX, and I'm going to show you how to use the color gradient node within this tutorial. Uh, for this particular tutorial, we're only going to be using the color gradient node to color the fire channels within our uh, smoke and fire simulation. Uh, and we're also going to turn off our smoke and fuel visualizations so that we only see fire. Um, and so to get started, the first thing we want to do is we want to change the way that our scene looks so that uh, we have a black background to work with. So we'll click this uh, ground uh, drop down and we'll see that it says checkerboard. We're going to change that to none with the left mouse button. And we're going to go to our atmosphere and change that to none as well. And now we have a nice black background that we can work with so that we can see our flames better. And so then we're going to go into the volume node and we are going to uncheck the render smoke and render fuel boxes. Uh, that way we're only seeing just the fire channel for our renderer. Uh, and then what we want to do is we want to expose the uh, fire color to the node graph so that we can plug in a color gradient node. Uh, and the way that you do that is you find the parameter that you want to expose to the node graph and you click it once. That's going to expose it to the timeline as you can see below. Then we click it again and we see this little pin connection and that's going to expose it to the node graph. Currently only smoke color, fire color, and fuel color are exposed to the node graph. In the future, all parameters that you can see will be able to be added uh, to the node graph. Uh, but from here, we can see that we now have a fire color that has popped up on this volume node. Uh, and if we click uh, this again, you can see that it disappears. And if we go back to our exposed node, uh, or exposed to the node graph uh, setting down here, then it will show up in the node graph. And so to spawn a color gradient node, what we're gonna do is we're gonna left click on this and drag, and then we'll um, let go, and we'll see that we can spawn a color gradient. And from here, we'll uh, immediately see that we've got a couple of different things. So you've got your label, so you can label this whatever you want. You can type in and name it something. Um, and then we've got the what channel you're mapping the color gradient to. In this case, we wanna map it to our temperature channel. So left click uh, on the drop down and then select temperature. Uh, and then we have our temperature bounds. In this particular case, I personally just find it uh, easier not to mess with the temperature bounds, but you can make it so that your gradient can fill up more of the um, space down here uh, if you want to. Hopefully in the future, we'll have an automatic way to do that. Uh, but for now, it's manual. We also have interpret, uh, interpolation of your color space. So you have sRGB, RGB, and HSV. Uh, so if you like different um, color, color types, and then you have your, your gamma so that you can change the gamma of your color gradient if you want to. Uh, and so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, left click on this black pin or this black um, node or, or nodule, whatever you wanna call it. Um, and what we'll do is we're gonna slide this over until we just see the fire appearing. And so let's see, so here it is. So it's just appearing now. And we're gonna leave that right about there. And then we're gonna go a little bit more and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click again inside this, this black color section and we're gonna spawn another node. Um, and then we'll click again and we'll spawn that here. And then finally we'll click once more. And then this right here is the one that we're going to edit. And so the one that is deselected, they're gonna be blue. If you have a actual uh, uh, pin here uh, selected, then what it's gonna be is, um, that's the one that you're editing. So then we have our color picker here and we're gonna change this to some kind of uh, light orange color or something like that. So we're gonna mess with some of these sliders until I see kind of what I'm looking for. Uh, and so here we go. Then you can copy down these values here if you're following along exactly with the tutorial. Uh, and we'll go ahead and hit accept for that. And then right over here, we're gonna move, we're gonna create another pin uh, inside of our color gradient and drag that really close to the initial fire. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you can already see that we're starting to get some really nice variation within our fire here. Uh, and we're just gonna make this quite a bit darker uh, and perhaps something a little bit like that. And we'll leave that for now. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna edit the way um, our temperature is being uh, displayed inside the volume node. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and change our black body intensity to something like 30 so that we get brighter flames. And then we're going to change our temperature adjustment to something like 
I don't know, 104. I find that about 104 or 100 works really well for color gradients. You can see up here, we've got some actually some pretty nice color variations within our fire. But now we have the, like this big white spot and that's because the temperature range on our color gradient has changed. So we're gonna move this down until that disappears. And then we're gonna go uh, something like this um, and just kind of see, see how it goes. Uh, and th this right here is looking pretty good to me, but I'm gonna change this to be maybe a little bit more on the the orange side. So maybe something like that. Uh, and then I think that my, my fade out color is quite good. And you can see that we have a really nice fire gradient just with these, these two simple pins that we've added into the color gradient. Uh, and so from here, what we can do is we can go into our simulation. We can make this look a little bit more like fire. Uh, and so we'll scroll down and we're gonna look for our wind so we can see here, here's our wind section. We're gonna just turn wind chaos all the way up to two. We're gonna scroll up a little bit to force and we're gonna change our buoyancy eh, to maybe 155. So now we've got flames that are rising really quickly and it's looking nice. Uh, one thing I will note is that the, you might think that the fire rendering looks a little bit crummy and it's got like a lot of little dots and pixels and stuff like that jumping around. And what we can do is we can go into our settings. And the reason for this is that our, our viewport quality is set to low our, or some medium setting rather. And so we can go here and we can set this up to five. And if we pause it, you can see that a lot of the errors in the fire go away. Um, and we also, we probably want to make this fire a little bit brighter now. And so we'll go over here to our volume node and we're going to just change our black body intensity to something higher. Uh, and then we also want to change our flame density scale to 100. So right here we've got our, our flames density scale. We'll change it to 100. Then we can probably change our black body temperature back down a little bit. And now we've got some nice uh, glowing flames. Uh, the last thing I'll mention is that sometimes it's really difficult to get the perfect colors for your fire. So if you want to, you can go into your scene node and go to color vibrance and tweak that up a little bit. And that's starting to look pretty good for me. And we'll stick with about, I don't know, 0.342 or something like that. Um, and then we'll go into our volume node again. And just to show you, you can adjust your temperature and you can see that this is gonna change the position of the gradient uh, and how the colors map to the fire. Like I said, 104 is about the sweet spot that I found thus far for fire. Uh, and then we can go into our color gradient and you can also uh, move some of these things down and you'll get more transparency within your fire uh, the closer uh, to the end these colors are. And so you can see here, uh, we've got some pretty, some pretty cool uh, highlights within our flames on the edges. And then the center is just uh, a really nice film of darker colors. Uh, and so from there, the only other thing I'll show you is that once you have this, you can quickly change your colors to something magical. Right, so we can make this purple. Uh, you know, we can go over here and make this like some kind of green color. Now we've got like this blue green fire, and you know, then you can expand the gradient or whatever. And at this point, it just takes playing around, you know, getting comfortable with the color gradients, uh, and that's pretty nice. Uh, the other thing I will show you is if we wanted to apply this to smoke, so we can say render smoke, and we're going to turn off our fire. And what we'll do is we'll go to smoke color and we'll expose that too. And we can plug this into smoke color. And now you can see that we've got some funky looking smoke. Um, and then if we had moved this up, you can see that we can change where the smoke uh, is interacting with the gradients. And then we can make this like purple or whatever, uh, green, red, whatever. And you can have multicolored smoke. Uh, so that shows you how you create some pretty cool fire. That shows you how you can create some great uh, colored smoke, funky smoke. Uh, and then you're able to export it out as a image sequence or a flipbook. And we'll have tutorials coming up showing you how to export in those particular formats. If you're using VDBs, you cannot export color data to my knowledge. And at least in our software at this point, you can't export color, color data. Uh, but other than that, that's all I've got to show you for the color gradient node. Uh, one, one last thing I'll say is if you want to delete a key, um, you just press the delete key on your keyboard. So select it, press delete, and it will delete that particular key um, or pin on the color gradient. Uh, that's all I've got. Go ahead, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got plenty more tutorials coming and uh, stay up to date with Embergen. If you haven't bought a subscription, 
You can go to our website at jengafx.com slash software slash pricing or just jengafx.com. Click see pricing and that is the buy page. You can buy Embergen, speed up your simulations. This is all real time and uh, get the world's fastest fluid simulation tool uh, for your own uses. Thank you very much and bye bye. <laughs>